Hi, I'm Curtis Cook, the executive chef of Calabi Health Spa. The recipe we're focusing on today is a pork loin, savoy cabbage, a parsnip puree or mash, and a lemon honey mustard sauce. To start this recipe, I'm gonna mix the honey mustard sauce first, then we'll move into the parsnips, the cabbage, and finally get that pork loin in the oven. So let's get started. So I'm going to add a little bit of minced garlic. We've got some whole grain mustard here. Dijon mustard. A little bit of honey from our bees here on property. And last but not least, just roll a little bit of that lemon or citrus. You kind of break up those cell membranes and you can get a little bit more juice. I'm gonna add some lemon juice, but also with this, you see all these seeds sitting here. If you keep that lemon turned up in your hand and squeeze, you should be able to get all of the lemon juice in there without too many seeds, but Maybe one little seed, rogue seed, kind of gets through. So we'll squeeze a little bit more lemon in there. And then we'll just take our spoon, just kind of mix that too. Pinch of salt for some seasoning. Now we'll reserve this for plating. Move on to parsnips. Okay, so the honey mustard sauce is done and we have that reserved. Now we're gonna work on the mashed parsnips. Parsnips look like carrots, do not taste like carrots. They've got a very unique flavor and they lend themselves really well to kind of as a substitute for let's say a potato puree or a mashed potato. Um, you can mix it in with potatoes, but I just love the flavor of parsnips. And I want our guests, I want my family, I want everybody to taste this beautiful vegetable and not let it go to waste by mixing it with your standard russet potatoes. So I'm just gonna take my Y peeler, it's Y because it's shaped like a Y. And then I just do these all strips in one stroke. Ah. Making sure to keep those fingers out of the way because peelers can also cut you. Get them peeled. Again, don't waste the peels. Either wash it and make the uh, dish with the parsnips not peeled or compost those guys. And then we'll just cut off some of the roots here, the root ends. Remove that. And then just nice chunks, all keeping it. So as I cut this long and skinny, I started shortening as the width of the parsnip started to get a little bit wider. That way, I'm wanting them to all, you can see this one's a lot longer than this one. I want them to cook at the same rate. I'm gonna put them in a pot of cold water. And to really taste the essence of this parsnip, we're just gonna simply boil it in water. So we've got our parsnips in the water. We're gonna have some herbs to flavor. We've got a fresh bay leaf here from our beautiful bay laurel trees on property and some fresh thyme from the tons of thyme we grow. And I always say that the every everybody always asks me from guests to family and friends what tools do you recommend in the kitchen and I say butcher's twine and cheesecloth because when you need them you don't have them and they instantly become the most important tool in the kitchen, but it's just nice to have. You could pick every leaf off of every twig of this thyme, which would take some time, no pun intended, um, and you could go through the rest of this dish and search for that bay leaf floating around. But when you can simply tie a nice little bundle like this, leave enough to kind of hang and maybe tie over a handle. Now when you're done simmering this, and we'll know they're done simmering when we can kind of pierce the parsnips with a knife, you just simply go remove the time bundle. 
Okay, sauce is made on reserve. We've got the parsnips cooking. Let's break down this Savoy cabbage. Now cabbage is just a bunch of leaves all wrapped on each other. So what we do is we're just gonna remove this. And if you reference the how-to video of breaking down a fennel, it's almost the same concept. There's the core. So to get to it, you can cut it in half. But look how far up the core runs. So again, take it. It's a little funky on the core. You just cut it into quarters. And then you can just kind of cut that core out, which also leaves the cabbage with a nice flat base to work with. This all goes to our trash bin. And then for this cabbage preparation, we're gonna saute it with some black pepper. One of my favorite things in the world, and the reason I paired a pork loin with the Savoy cabbage, <coughs> is cabbage and pork sausage. But in a spa setting, I don't do the pork sausage, I just do the pork tenderloin. So it's the same concept. And I want nice thick ribbons. So we're looking at probably an inch thick. Because this way, when we saute it, we don't get very soft and kind of extremely wilted cabbage. We just get that, that nice, it gives a little bit of texture to the dish all the while eating some nice pepper cabbage. So we'll move this to our, our plate that we've prepped. Now that we've got all of our mise en place in its place, let's get over to the pork loin. Okay, it's time to get this pork loin seared on our roasting rack with a thermometer in the oven. So the first thing I always do is I bring our proteins out, let them sit for 20 or so minutes just to come to room temperature. We don't want that shock of a cold protein hitting a very hot pan. And then with this, we need to season. So season with salt in this raining technique here, really covering the outside of it. and then some freshly ground black pepper. You can really taste the flavor when you take whole peppercorns and grind them fresh as opposed to buying pre-ground pepper. We're gonna add just a little bit of grapeseed oil to our pan, and I use grapeseed oil. It's got a high smoke point, so you can really get this pan nice and hot pork loin in and you just want to hear that sear and really what we're doing here is searing the outside to get it nice and golden brown kind of setting up the flavor of what it's going to be and you can kind of roll some of that oil and if you think it's a little dry just a tad you can always add more you don't need to start kind of pan frying this guy you just want a little bit to coat the bottom of that pan and allow it to sear to really develop that color and that flavor. So we're gonna give it probably two minutes on this side, flip it over, give it another two to three minutes on that side to develop that, and then we'll transfer it to our pan. Okay, so we've got a nice golden brown sear right there on the front side of this loin. Now we're gonna do the same. So two to three minutes on this side, and then we're, we've already got sitting in the wings, our rack with a wire on it. I like to use the wired rack to lift the protein off so the heat can go all the way underneath the entire protein while it's in the oven. All right, so the pork loin is done searing on both sides and we have placed it on that wire rack. Now, as a chef, practice makes perfect. You can, by touch, feel that, man, that's pretty rare to raw. But at home, it's much easier if you go out and there's these thermometers right here. This is the part that attaches to the probe that you insert into the protein. And this is the part that you set the temperature at which you want it to beep to tell you when it's done. You can kind of clip this on your belt, put it in your pocket and walk around with it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this probe directly in the center and try to get kind of in there so the probe hits right in here. And now we're gonna go right to the oven. 
Okay, so while the pork was in the oven, or in the oven right now, our parsnips are done, our cabbage is ready to saute. So we need to remove the herb bundle we had in there. And if you blink, you're gonna miss how easy this is. But we just take this little string right here. This is the, the hardest technique of the dish and remove this guy out. Now it's left its flavor in here. So in our food processor, I'm gonna take some of the parsnips out and I remove the parsnips from their liquid in order to start to get a nice rough mash. And I'll eventually start to add a little bit of this parsnip and herb water back to the dish to give us that consistency we're looking for. And then finishing it off with just a touch of olive oil and a pinch of salt. Okay, so we're gonna get this pureeing just without any liquid first. What I've done is broken up all of the parsnips. Now I'm just gonna start introducing some of this broth back to it. A couple to start, that should do. And now to show you where I'm at, we're gonna scrape down the sides. But do you see this? It's not pureed smooth like baby food. It's got some nice texture to it. I'm gonna let this run for another probably 60 seconds, but introduce some fat to it in the form of olive oil. Give a nice pinch of salt. And then let this guy run. All right, pork's in the oven. Everything else is complete. We're really close to plating, so let's get this cabbage sauteed. Let's start our pan, medium heat, decent amount of grapeseed oil. Again, just so we can get a little bit hotter. And then let's start adding some of that cabbage ribbons. You know, don't overload your pan. Do what you can do comfortably. If you have to work in batches, you work in batches. We're gonna season with some salt and then black pepper because I really want that black pepper taste to come through on the cabbage. And then we're just gonna kind of turn because you can see, look how quickly it toasts. I do not want to saute this to death, meaning I don't need it really, really soft. I just want to soften it basically so that we still can retain some texture because when we think about composing the dish, we're going to have this chewy pork loin. We're going to have very soft um, parsnip puree, the same with the sauce. So the texture should come from somewhere. And right now it's going to be this cabbage right here. So we just keep turning and turning and it's just going to ever so gently start to soften. Also getting a little bit of color on it. And one thing to really be careful of, since we introduced pepper, one sensation I'm breathing in right now is I can taste the pepper on the back of my throat, which is almost having a cough response come out. Kind of the same thing as if you were to hit this pan, this hot pan with vinegar, you don't want to breathe that air in, that moisture that's starting to evaporate off. But what we're looking for, we've got this cabbage, which is getting nice and pliable and nice and soft. And I think for the last portion of this, you just bring in maybe a little bit of water here just to help create some of that steam and that'll kind of finish this cabbage right off. Okay, so I just removed the pork out of the oven. It's ready to go. So let's start to plate. All of our components are right there. We've got our parsnip puree. 
that we can just kind of put a nice heaping couple of spoonfuls on there and just give it one of these. What we're building here is a nice little well. And in this well, we need to put something in there. So let's add that just wilted peppered cabbage. And I like to extend it out because we're gonna place the pork right on top of it. So I'd like to see some of that cabbage. And then for the pork, it's roasted, it's rested. We rest it for a few minutes just to let all of those juices kind of come back in. And then we'll take it and we'll start to slice. And I like to give nice kind of meaty chunks of this pork. And then we'll set it right atop here. It's nice and juicy. And then last but not least, Let's not forget that nice honey mustard sauce that we made earlier. Now remember it's nice and acidic and got a lot of mustard in it, so a little will go a long way. And there's our roasted pork tenderloin, parsnip mash, some peppered cabbage, and a honey mustard lemon sauce. Thanks for joining us. If you like this recipe, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, you can find all of this and way more in our cookbook, Beautiful Living. Thanks for joining us.